Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Hope Watts, board certified family physician, health coach, speaker, and lifestyle expert. I am coming to you today to wish you a Merry Christmas and a better year than we had this year. Uh, I apologize for some of the difficult technical difficulties that we've had in the past. And um, this time, I would like to revisit something we've talked about in the past, and that is gratefulness. We have had a difficult year this year, and sometimes it's been hard to see what is good about it. But in every situation, there are some things that we can take to heart. We can count our blessings, and that makes us feel a lot better, even if our situation is not what we want it to be. So we will wait a few minutes to see um, for people to uh, come in. Also, we will, um, sorry for that, um, just review with you. I hope your weather is good. I'm in Charlotte. North Carolina, the sun is shining brightly, although it's cold outside. We don't have snow, so I am grateful for that also. So, um, we spoke about gratefulness in general terms around Thanksgiving, and um, we talked about some of its benefits, and um, one of them is that we just generally feel better when we've done something nice for people. And we feel happier when we take the initiative and tell people that we're grateful or we're thankful for some of the things that we've done. Also, uh, gratefulness, they have found, helps our physical well-being. Um, they have found also that people who are grateful um, generally take care of themselves. They get to that they're physically fit and without even the doctor saying anything they are physically fit and they keep up with healthy lifestyle um also um we did touch on the fact that even if things are not going very well if a person is grateful for certain things in the situation that they're in they are able to get through difficult situations. And many people are surprised because of some of the things that certain people have gotten through. And this is something we need to keep in mind, especially during this COVID season, because things are not necessarily going the way we want them to go. Now, gratefulness, uh, one definition is thankful appreciation for what an individual receives and can be this can be tangible or intangible from other people or from what they call a higher power, who I call God. Being grateful um, to be alive is a great way to make the most of every day. Since tomorrow is not promised, this motivates many people to be their best selves every day. Let's discuss a few other things that are associated with gratefulness that we may not have covered before. Gratefulness can bring about a sense of well being. The only way to describe that is people feel very fulfilled and satisfied. They tend to be more agreeable and they are more positive about things. And they generally have a higher level of life satisfaction. And what's interesting is that sometimes they may not have everything, but they are still very satisfied and grateful. Persons who express gratefulness to each other tend to be more willing to give to others. These persons do don't have a short fuse, as they say. They don't get angry very quickly. They generally think the best of persons, no matter what. 
And this is another reason why I brought up gratefulness this time of year, because many places are asking for donations and people who are grateful generally are very giving. Um, the to Toy for Tots comes to mind because there are many parents who are not able to even have the money to buy toys for their children. Angel Tree, which is another way to show gratitude to families. I remember one year in our practice, we did have Angel Tree and the family wrote down what they needed. And I picked one of the things on their list and they, their feedback was they never, they didn't think that anyone was gonna buy that for them. So being grateful and showing other gratitude Think of how that person felt when that, that family felt when they got one of those items on their angel tree list and it wasn't, they didn't expect to get it. Additionally, Salvation Army has a kettle as we see and many times they do work undercover all the time. It's not just you know at Christmas time, but that's when they're more visible, but they take care of quite a few people who come to their, to their places to help. They actually do employment for people who may, may not be able to get employment elsewhere. And of course, a lot of times they do have clothing there that they sell to people, that people who may not be able to afford regular clothing. And they, you know, they launder it and do things like that. And food banks, there are many food banks who need food. And this year is even more of an emphasis on that because of what people are going through with COVID-19. But besides that, many charities this year and every year get quite, quite sizable donations from people who are grateful. Sometimes they, they don't even advertise. These people have their own charities and they every year give to them. So it, it stands to reason that people who are giving are grateful. People who are not grateful tend not to give. So think about that. Now this year may not be a year that you can give, but think about it at other times during the year. When you have a few more bucks and there's a charity you know about or something you've wanted to do with a charity, maybe give back in other ways, such as volunteering. And this is a year um, when we can volunteer to do meals and things like that, you know, safely, we hope. The other thing about um, gratefulness is that Recent research shows that people who focus on gratitude show more optimism about their lives. And optimism is highly associated with um, a positive mindset, meaning that people are thinking more positive thoughts and they are um, persons who want to be their best selves. And they're also ones who are healthier and probably more fit. Now, have you ever encountered someone who was just a happy person? I mean, you'll say, oh, it's raining. Oh, that's okay. That's liquid sunshine. It's going to turn to sunshine at some time soon. Or, you know, you know, I fell down the steps and I said, oh, you'll be okay. You know, it's just a small, small thing that's happening. And no matter what you say, they have a positive spin on it. Likewise, there are people who have negative spins on everything. Um, I, <laughs> I went to work. It was one particular week. There were quite a few very negative things that were happening. And people were just, you know, giving their opinions about this, that, and the other. And, you know, this person shouldn't have been doing this job because they're not trained to do it. And, and, and truly, there were a lot of negative things happening. I mean, I must admit that. But the atmosphere in the place turned very, very dark in some ways. Um, not dark enough that people would, you know, start screaming or anything. But I asked them to, if, if it was something they knew was negative, to put a positive spin on it and express it in a way that people can say, oh, yeah, I do recognize that. But it didn't bring all the, you know, people when they're, when they're negative tend to embellish on even more negative things. So they, what I noticed was 
they didn't embellish as much. You know, they would say one fact, say what happened, and then move on to something else. And the tone in the room became so, so much more positive. There wasn't that, that darkness that was there. I felt a little better because it, it made it easier for me to get my work done. And, um, and, and I noticed that there were times when they just said, look, let me not say anything because she's sitting there, meaning me. And, but they were struggling to say positive things. So, so we have to be careful how much negativity we come to the table with or we uh, express ourselves. Um, a recent study um, asked people to write down thankful things or grateful things about persons that they knew. And um, at the end of the study, they found out that people's happiness levels were much higher. Their life satisfaction levels had also increased. So it's evident that happiness and life satisfaction, along with gratitude, can have lasting effects. So begin to think about being grateful and think about some of the positive things that can occur when we're, we put a positive spin on things and we're grateful. And, you know, I know at this time of year, we may not be able to visit with our families. I know I'm not able to, and we may not be able to have our friends over because of restrictions of COVID. I know here there is a, a curfew that we have to observe, but besides that, we have our health, and many of us still have a place to stay and we have things to eat. So we, we should concentrate on the things that we know we have, not on things that we don't have. So we have found that overall gratefulness gives us a better, out, better outlook on life, even when things may not be going as well as we want, it, we want them to. And so gratefulness moves into positivity and even how we think about things, positive mindset. So reasons to push back when negative things are going on is it because it keeps us feeling on top. Um, as, as, as I said, the conversation got so negative that I dreaded even going in there in the daytime. Also, it keeps us from go getting down. Now, in this day and time, there are a lot of things that are not going the way we want them to go. Um, I've had to cut back, actually cut back on how much of the news media I listen to because sometimes they're not that positive. Although I notice on the news, they're trying to put some positive things that people are doing during the COVID season to make people feel that it's not all bad. And I'm for that 100%. And pushing back on negativity increases the amount of positivity that we keep overall, okay? Besides well-being, if persons practice gratitude and they have a higher power, I call that power God, they can reduce stress. Think about all the stress that people have. I'm not saying that's the only answer because some things there are solutions to but it gives you a different perspective on how bad it is. Also, they have found that gratitude decreases the amount of anxiety and depression. Now, I just want to caution people, this is not a treatment for anxiety or depression. But some people feel blue sometimes, you know, because something's happened to someone in their family, or, and, and now they may not have a, a job and you know, the pressure, financial pressures are uh, coming in, but looking at it in a different perspective often helps people ride the tide of something that's very, very, very uh, negative. Additionally, this is what I found. When if there's a positive situation or positive atmosphere, and it doesn't drag you down, you're able to think clearly, think clearly about solutions that you may not have thought of before because your mind cannot think through solutions when you're feeling down, you're feeling blue, 
or there's a sense of negativity in the atmosphere. So I would say, if you need to do some problem solving, get in a positive mode, think about some positive affirmations, and you will be well on your way to solving quite a few problems. And, um, and I, I would just wholeheartedly tell you to do something like that. The other thing about gratefulness is reciprocity, and I call it the reciprocity effect. Um, one time I was out with a friend of mine and this particular road had a lot of tolls and she was complaining, oh man, there's another toll and um, that's another $2. And you know, if you don't have one of those little, um, I guess, indicators on your car, you're going to have to stop and pay the toll. So, so she complained and complained and uh, talked about how, you know, she didn't really want to pay the toll. And so I said, well, we got to get to where we're going. So look, I'll give you the money for the toll. And she said, oh, no, 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 I have it. So she gets to the toll booth and uh, the person says to her, well, you don't owe any money. She says, well, what do you mean I don't owe any money? She said, well, the lady in front of you paid for your toll. She, so my friend looks at me and I just look away because she had been complaining so much. I said, mm, see, someone was thinking about her and maybe she was grumpy about the tolls also. So my friend kind of got out of the toll lane and tried to catch up with the person and waved at her as if to say thank you. And the person kind of nodded their head. So at the next toll, my friend paid for someone else's toll. And she felt so much better after that. She didn't complain again for the whole trip. So I'm saying all that to say this, that when we're practicing gratefulness, we tend to want to give back. And giving back could mean in a monetary way, um, or it could mean we donate our time. Um, it could also mean we send a little card to thank the person for the, uh, the thing that they did for us and we really appreciated it. This positive reaction can reverberate through our families, through our communities, and our cities. Now, am I saying that you need to have money to be grateful? No, because some of the, some of the most inexpensive things are just saying thank you. And I remember growing up, I had a friend, I guess she was a friend of the family who would always say, it's never too late to say thank you. So gratefulness can just mean saying thank you and how much you appreciate someone. And the person is going to feel very, very, very happy about that because a lot of times we don't tell people how much we appreciate them. So in this time around Christmas, Think about people you can thank. I, I got a text today from a friend who told me how grateful she was that I was her friend and how grateful that we've had time to spend together. And as we said, tomorrow is not promised. So make the most of the time that you have with your friends and family. So in the season this, the season of uncertainty and the season where things are not what they should be and they may not be for quite some time. Think about how you can be grateful for just some of the small things and see how you feel. We had a gratefulness challenge last month. And quite a few people were happy that we, we decided to do that because I don't think they even thought about doing it. And it's one of those things that, you know, you know, your mom always told you, you know, Miss So-and-so gives you a gift, go and tell her thank you. But it can be a little bit more than that. We can practice gratefulness on a daily basis. And I, my suggestion is that you think of at least three, minimum three things. You can do more if you want. And just think about three things you're grateful for. And some people, I, I was at um, Barnes & Noble's 
several years ago and they had a gratefulness journal. I was like, well, why would they need that? But I am a reformed person. I am a grateful person now. So I would truly understand what that gratefulness journal would be. So I hope this has given you a different perspective on things around this season that may not be the way we want them to be, but we can learn how to be grateful in the situation that we're in. And we can help others be grateful too by giving back, telling people how much we enjoy their company, how much we're grateful for them. And we can do it in other ways too, like volunteering if we can. And in some cases we can give money to help our favorite charities. So we're gonna wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous and happy new year. And hopefully things will be a little better in 2021. Thank you.